So here we are. I'm going to come into my house. We're going to do a little green routine. She's Abby's very excited. Scoopy is very excited. But I'm making sure that she does wait here. See how the leash is loose? Never let her pull us through the doorway. And we always make sure she has a, a we try to have a fairly calm sit stay. She has a lot of anxiety. We have dogs in this house too, but we can't get away from dogs here. Okay. See how she's and the, the way to have her be calmer and to not pull you everywhere is for you to slow down. And if it means slowing down to a crawl through those difficult places like doorways where she's going to pull you through, then you just, it's all about what you do. If you start doing things differently, she's going to change. So if she was consistently walked through a doorway like this, she would be calmer. So. You want to start doing that and see how I'm just doing a little left turn to go back and close the door. Whenever you're turning left into her, and I'm just doing these little tiny prompts. They're just, just to slow her down. And I'm walking slowly over, okay, sit to the stationing mat. She loves her mat, but she has to wait until, no. She has to wait until I allow her to go over there, nope. And she hasn't done this exercise in a while, so she's very excited. So see how she's got a lot of anxiety and she's very excited. I'm going to say no. I'm going to do a little, a little circle to turn her away from it, to reset her, to see if she can do better. And all I said was no, and then I brought it no. Maybe I have to do it again. Okay. Until she gets it, that sit. This is about her, no, exerting self-control. We're not going to go forward until she calms herself down. So she's a little bit better now. With my right hand, I'm going to lean over, pat her chest, and say, go to your mat. Go. Down. Make sure she's right there. No. She wants to crawl over to Belinda, who's the camera person. Make sure that she doesn't crawl off the mat. See how her feet are off the mat? I'm just going to touch her feet with my boots. And she'll back up. Come on. There you go. She knows that move. She hasn't done this exercise in a long time, so she's a little bit rusty. But she's going to remember everything. So that's where I want her. So she gets a reward. Good. And I just put it on the mat. Make sure you put it on the mat. And that she takes it off the mat. Notice how... I'm not allowing her to take it out of my hand. See how she's waiting? Good. If she starts to take stuff out of your hand, if she's like trying to take stuff from you, that's a lack of respect. And also it means that she's not focused and she's not in the moment and doing this exercise the way you need it because this exercise is supposed to develop a calm state of mind. And if when you're putting your hand down there and she's trying to take that out of your hand and she's messing with your hand, then you need to say no and pull back. Or you can do this, no, and give her a little bonk with the back of your knuckle. And she'll know what that means. Good, she's doing really well. She's waiting until I put it on the mat, taking it off the mat. It seems like a little thing, but it's very important. If you're not, taking, if you're not paying attention to the details of this, none of it will be any good. So it's that little three seconds, four seconds where you go down to deposit the food and she's really waiting until you withdraw and she takes it off the mat. It's very important. Good. So I'm just going to start walking around to different places in the house. I'm going to go in this back hallway here, come back. She can turn around and look as long as she doesn't turn her body around. Good. I'm going to go over here to this part of the room, come back, make sure you keep it on the dog. Always making sure I'm doing things slowly. Good. If she's frantic and overstimulated like this, now you can show me. If she's frantic and overstimulated like this, then you need to become calm and move slowly and deliberately because She's a mirror of how you are. So if you handle her in this way, she will start to calm down. And it takes a little bit of practice, but just be really focused when you do this. And 
slow your actions down, don't be tossing the food, don't be moving quickly, just do what I'm doing here, which you see me doing. So just very calmly putting the, the food on the mat. See how she went, she kind of touched my hand there. No. Good, that's better. I really want to make sure she waits. So I'm going to walk into the kitchen, close these French doors behind me, come back. She stayed down, she gets a reward. No crawling though, no, no crawling. She's still staying down though, so she gets a reward when I come back. I'm going to make her wait, no, no pawing me. Anything like that makes you take the treat back until she does it the right way. No. She nudged me with her nose. Nope. Calm. Nope. See, what we're showing her, we're trying to teach her self-control. What we show her here is like, you'd already have the food if you just like be calm and stop doing that stuff. Good. That's what I'm looking for. She actually turned her head away. She didn't paw me. And I taught her, hey, if you play this game the right way, then you get your rewards. Now I'm going to do something that's a little bit more difficult for her to handle. I'm going to leave the house and knock on the door. And then come back. Very good. Good. And I'm going to, now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to ring the doorbell and knock on the door. It's a, it's a crazy doorbell. Good. She gets a reward for that. Now, if at any time she gets up, like if I come back and she's gotten up, I'm going to say no. Stay calm, say no, take the, the leash. She may have dragged it over here, she may be over here, so she meets you at the front door, she got up, no. Take that leash, walk into her, she's gonna be on your left again, just walk her back, put her back. Don't say a word, all you say is no. And then do the exercise again. If she's on the mat, but she just stood up, you still say no, come over, you pick up the leash, Step on that leash and put her back. She knows what that means and she'll go right back. So you can do all kinds of things to distract her in the house. These are just a few examples. But the purpose of this exercise is that she has this extended period of time, in this case like five minutes or so, where she really stays in, in a downstay no matter what we do or where we go. This is great for building a tolerance to stress so that she can handle the outside world. Whatever she learns here carries out to the real world because we're, we're developing a state of mind that she really needs a, a way to, to tolerate stressful occurrences which happen out there. And good girl, I'll give her another reward. And you're orchestrating this whole thing so she's doing it with you. So she'll do it with you out there too if you practice this here. And it just takes five minutes a day. If I wasn't talking so much, if I was just doing it with her, I'd already be done. And even three to five minutes of like, do you see that? No. See this? You can give a little, no. Nope. A little token. See if that happens? No. Nope. Come here. Okay. Just reposition her. Make sure she's not hanging off the mat. Make sure she does this properly. And of course, you know, she, she's uh, rusty, so um, she's, this is a her at her worst. Just think how she, she'll be if you do this every day for the next week and then for the next month. Once she's perfect in one spot, like let's say this is your living room, and she doesn't make mistakes, she can go outside, you can bang on the windows like I'm about to do, down. Like that, knock on the door and then she's still down. No matter what you do, she's perfect. Good. Then you need to move the mat to a different location, a different room, a different, you know, different kitchen or someplace or change, even change the position of the mat where 
uh, maybe the mat, even in the same room, the mat's over there now and she's facing this way or something like that. That makes a big difference because if you keep doing this exercise in the same spot and she's perfect and she never makes mistakes anymore, then she'll start to get stale. You need to always be doing something a little bit different when she's perfect so that she can make a mistake, make a mistake here or there because if she's not making mistakes, she's not learning. So little mistakes are good to have, like the things you saw her doing here, because after just this one time, she's gonna be back on track again and much easier to handle. And if you guys do this, just, just, say, just set your timer, three minutes. Five, five minutes a day, three minutes a day. It's not the, the amount of time, it's the quality of what you do. So you wanna do stuff like what you see me doing here. And always change the position of the mat once she's good in one room or one location. And you can do this mat exercise outside next to the horse corral or wherever, when she gets really good, wherever you do this mat exercise, that area or that part of the house, is she's gonna start seeing that as the place where she's calm. So that's why this mat is such an important thing. It's, it, she was taught very specifically, there's only one behavior that she exhibits on this mat. That's downstay, no matter what happens, calm as possible. And so wherever you practice this mat exercise, she starts to see that environment as the place that she's gonna be calm as well. So that's why it's so good to do it fence lines where dogs run back and forth and bark at other dogs or whatever because you start doing the mat exercise there five, 10 minutes a day, maybe twice a day. And they stop doing that craziness at that fence line because now that's the area where they practice their calm stuff. And you change their perception of what it means to be in that location. So that's why this mat exercise is a really cool thing to do and you can use it in all different places once she gets really good in your house and your general environment, you can use it anywhere and it really helps her overall um, just develop a calm state of mind. So I'm gonna take her off the mat and pick up the leash like this. I'm gonna pat her leg and say, okay. And then we're going to just do a little left turn. I'm gonna close this door here. A little left turn to leave the house. Gonna have her sit. Gonna do this, uh, this front door exercise that I do with the dogs where since it's such a common problem for dogs to race through the front door and pull their owner through in and out, so we practice having them know that this is the calm zone. So before you're gonna go outside, you're gonna do a little sit stay like this where you, if you wanna, you know, you have a few extra moments, you can walk around both ways like that. I walked around both sides, she stayed there. She did really well, coming back, good, give her a reward. And now I'm going to allow her to walk through with me. Okay. See how the leash is loose? Keep that leash loose. If she goes ahead of you, you just do a little, little pop like that. But she knows how to do this. If you do my moves, she'll do this for you. Okay. And you can also do it sit on the way in as well. And in fact, what you know, the training is, we just do this thing in and out, in and out sometimes, and then maybe they just go back in the house. It's not always, because we go through this front door, doesn't mean that we're always going for a walk. It's just, I want to develop this front door area as the calm zone, good, where they get rewards for going to this place in their mind. Whoops, dropped some food. Good girl. Okay, so you can just practice going in and out. It's a huge exercise, great exercise, because you're dealing with, sit, her state of mind where she gets easily overstimulated. If you deal with this here in doorways and sidewalks and stair stairways and you know porch areas where they do that, then she'll be calmer in all different areas as well because you're really chipping away at that state of mind she has where she goes nuts in different situations and it's an easy place for you to do it. It's so simple to do this, anybody can do it. So, okay, do this with her as much as possible. If you did it every day just once, it'd be great for her and she'd really start to calm down. Okay, so one more left turn as I close the door, we go for a walk. Okay.